next up, we've got our last entrepreneur who's changing the way we think about diagnosing disease. John Lewandowski is the founder of Disease Diagnostic Group and the winner of the MIT Ideas Global Challenge. He's here to talk, about, to talk today about an innovation that could eliminate the world's deadliest disease. The coolest part, well, cool for some, is that it's pure physics. John? What if I told you I could save one million lives every year with just refrigerator magnets and a laser pointer? My company is Disease Diagnostic Group. My name is John Lewandowski, and my flagship product is the rapid assessment of malaria. Now, I'm a mechanical engineering student at MIT, so I'm more used to looking at stuff like this, not like this. And ultimately, uh, I got started on this through my uh, senior design project at Case Western Reserve University. And the interesting thing there was, I was mainly focused on mosquito bed nets. And the problem with mosquito bed nets is that actually they do such a good job keeping out mosquitoes that they're so small, they don't let enough airflow through into the uh, person's uh, uh, ecosystem. And so the issue here is they're not actually cool enough to be able to be used on a daily basis, and they end up being used more as uh, fishing nets rather than bed nets. But this got me interested in using a lot of the um, advice back from the community partners and the local governments, and told me that the, actually the biggest problem is diagnosis. And the key thing they told me about this is that the mosquito is the deadliest creature on the face of the earth. And I said, how could this be possible, considering it's so small? Well, it boils down to the idea that we meet Emmanuel. And Emmanuel is a five-year-old child from Tanzania. And he lives in about a 1,000-person village. He thinks he got bit by that very same mosquito just this morning. So he walks with his entire family uh, two miles to the nearest clinic. And at that clinic, the clinician puts his uh, blood under a microscope and looks for the infection. And well, can you see the infection? Actually, neither could he. Because Emmanuel had a low level infection that will eventually spread and potentially kill him by being a cerebral malaria. But in addition, he'll walk all the way back to his um, village, two miles, continue to get bit by mosquitoes, and transmit that infection to other people. And that's why malaria is a $12 billion problem. It's because half the world's population is affected by it. There are 500 million infections worldwide, and ultimately 1 million deaths. And so my company is mainly focused on diagnosing that asymptomatic infection, being able to look for the disease when the treatment is nearly 100% effective, and also when it's much more inexpensive to uh, give to the patient. And ultimately, the biggest problem is that only one out of every eight malaria infections are diagnosed correctly. So that's where my device comes in. It's called the Rapid Assessment of Malaria. It's a reusable device that offers a portable, portable enough to be able to take in to the clinic for the person to use, or sit at the pharmacy where someone with a non-specific fever can come in and get tested, and also be paired with a single-use cuvette that holds the blood, and a database that allows you to store data for epidemiology purposes or for procurement. And ultimately, what's going on inside the cell, I mentioned magnets. So the parasite comes into the red blood cell, starts digesting the hemoglobin, but it can't finish it. And so it polymerizes this into a larger iron crystal that looks like this. And so for an engineering student, that's music to our ears, because these particles are rod-like. They have interesting magnetic and optical properties. And we can do some very cool things with that, one of which is shining a laser through a blood sample that holds these particles and also holding a magnet next to them. What we're looking for is these particles to clump up and organize in orderly form. And the amount of light reaching the other side tells us not only if you have an infection, but how large that infection is. And so here's ultimately what we're looking for, uh, what's going on in the sample. So we have our hemozone that's scattered around the blood sample. We start pulsing it with a magnetic field. And these uh, particles are rotating around. And based on the amount of light, the white space that gets through the other side, we can determine if that oscillating signal is there and if we have that infection. And ultimately, what is nice about this is it's very simple to use. The person doesn't need any clinical experience whatsoever. In addition, they don't even need refrigeration. So you just take a drop of blood, put it in the cuvette, and 10 to 15 seconds later, you get a result, a quantitative score for how large the parasite load is. And I mentioned it's so easy to use that we can imagine this going through similar distribution channels as mosquito bed nets now 
other treatment, or being put in schools where there's a lot of infected children already there that don't have access to diagnostics on a regular basis. But ultimately, the goal for the company is this merger between a low-cost test and a low limit of detection. And that's really what's going to dominate diagnostics for the next decade, showing that we're a company that's on the forefront of this uh, diagnostic path. But what's really interesting is how we got to the point where we are now. So being an engineering student, I was able to go into the lab with really no funding and uh, build the prototypes. So I 3D printed the housings, designed the circuit boards on software, and ordered components to be able to assemble it in a machine shop that is really available in any campus or local community. And actually, if you look inside the, the normal device, it's pretty interesting because the components are nothing more than you'd find off of Amazon or eBay. It's only when they come together that they form such an interesting solution to this global problem. And what's interesting also is how I got to the financial support for my company. So um, on the pathway, I, know I, I told you that I didn't have any funding to begin with. And what's very key is actually the MIT Ideas Global Challenge gave me the ability to write a proposal with this device in mind that would allow me to engage with clinical partners in Peru and India, take my prototypes there, deploy them, and then get feedback that would allow me to generate a better business model, uh, a better company, and ultimately go for these larger organizations that could provide not only more funding, but just a larger community. And so MIT Ideas was really the platform or a stepping uh, stone for a lot of what I've raised today, which is over a million dollars for this company, entirely non-dilutive uh, funding. And I'm happy to announce my impact, and I'm sure my community members will be happy that we've already established over 2,000 tests in the field with our devices on five different continents and nine different countries. And next year, we hope to uh, do over 5,000 tests, deploying this even farther out with more uh, professional devices on six continents and over 20 different countries. And we've also been able to get enough publicity through talks like these that we've been able to have IDEO do an industrial engineering redesign of our device to make it more professional looking, and also an engineering firm to be able to look, go inside of it and make it more robust from an um, engineering standpoint. But overall, I mentioned that the goal of the company is actually to build this out to a multiplex platform. So being able to not just detect malaria, which is our first disease, but if you're traveling back even from this uh, presentation, being able to test in the airport if you have dengue fever, uh, tuberculosis, malaria, or another disease. And so that screening ability is something that we're very focused on for the company. But overall, my call to action to you is really uh, the interdisciplinary approach to this. So going across campus, across the department, engaging these conversations with engineers, businessmen, marketers, and creating that in interdisciplinary team that allows you to be able to come up with ideas like this. And so with that, the next time you put your magnets on your refrigerator, Think of DDG and how we're trying to reach 1 billion people. Thanks.